Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to what I usually make on this channel. If you're new here, this channel is primarily videos about books, what I'm liking reading at the moment, favourite books, book vlogs. Occasionally I'll talk about film and television as well, but it's mainly books. This video is going to have a bit about reading and writing in the third part, but is also going to be about just what I was up to in May with kind of a focus on resetting life a little bit. Every month since I've started this channel I've done a video on the TBR for the next month but I decided last month I was going to stop doing these videos because they weren't my favourite videos to film. I felt like they were putting a lot of pressure on what I wanted to read versus what I'd said I was going to read. So I just decided I would stop doing those videos and experiment a little bit with types of other videos I could do each month. So this video is kind of a little bit of an experiment. It's kind of vloggy but with a focus on certain things I've been doing this month. I've been really enjoying doing more chatty videos as well so this will be a nice opportunity for me to sit down and just chat a little bit, a bit about what's been going on in my life greater than books. A nice video you can put on if you're like busy doing something else but you just want some background noise and someone to listen to ramble on about pointless things because <laughs> I really like watching those types of videos just like while I'm playing a game or while I'm cleaning but I do totally understand that this sort of video isn't for everyone and the majority of my subscribers subscribed for book related content so if you don't want to watch this video I'm not going to hold it against you I can't hold it against you and just know that this isn't going to be a usual thing I might do it again at some point but I don't think it's going to be a regular type of video but if you do stick around I hope you enjoy it I hope it just kind of soothes and relaxes you there's going to be some montages of cleaning and gardening and me figuring out how to overcome some writer's block so thank you for watching So this month we were having a couple of guests come to stay with us, some close friends who hadn't visited us in our new house yet. I'm saying new house, we did move in in September so it's not that new anymore. But we had such a lovely, lovely time with them. They came down at the perfect time because the weather was scorching hot, beautiful. We took them into Bath one of the days, went to the Roman Baths and went to this amazing board game cafe called Thirsty Meeples as well. And then we also went over to Stonehenge, which none of us had ever been to. I think Alex has like driven past it before, but we actually went in to visit it and it was stunning. Another gorgeous day. The rest of the time was spent having a barbecue and just playing more board games and having a really nice chill weekend. Basically, our friends coming to visit kind of spurred on a little bit of a spring clean. It wasn't a full house spring clean, I'm not going to claim that. It definitely wasn't. I'm the sort of person who'll like wake up one day and be like, I'm going to tackle that cupboard today. Nothing's going to get in my way. And then I'll just really focus on one thing in the house, get it sorted and then enforce that that place doesn't get messed up again. So this month for me it was getting the kitchen in order because basically when we moved in in September, if you've ever moved before you know how stressful it can be when you're suddenly faced with all of your belongings in a new space with no idea where to put them. It can be a bit overwhelming so when we moved in last September the stuff in the kitchen kind of got shoved anywhere and everywhere. There was a level of organisation as in like all the plates went together, all the mugs went together, there was a food pantry cupboard where all the dry food went, cereal, coffee, tea, everything that belonged together was together but the places in the kitchen they were put didn't make sense in the long run and it was starting to really really get to me and I think it was getting to Alex as well. The other problem we had is we had too many of some things so like we had accumulated so many glasses 
so many. I think we had like maybe 20 plus glasses of different varieties, wine glasses, gin glasses, pint glasses, shot glasses, so many. And there's only me and Alex in this house. Yes, you need an excess for when you have guests, but you don't need like an excess of times a billion, you know what I mean? So we really wanted to sort out the glasses and like cull what we didn't need whilst also organising the kitchen so that it made sense where things went. So like before the mugs were over by the fridge but the tea coffee station was over by the door to the kitchen. They were on opposite sides of the kitchen. That doesn't make sense. So that was the goal, just making things make sense, <laughs> basically. And also just giving the cupboards a clean and organising the food a bit more because we just got to the point where like things were getting shoved in so you had to like, if you wanted some ketchup, you had to fight to get to the ketchup. So I spent a couple of hours organising the kitchen and I'm honestly really happy with how it turned out. I'm so happy that we finally did it because it was a job I was putting off for so long but it did only take a couple hours. It was an intimidating job to do but it was so worth it and it didn't actually take as long as I thought it would take. I am so happy with it now. I'm so happy that like it makes sense where everything is is and everything goes and it just makes putting shops away so much easier, cooking so much easier, everything has its designated spot. The only issue is I keep going, I don't know if Alex does this but I keep going to get mugs from the wrong cupboard still sometimes so it is going to take a little bit of getting used to but honestly if you're like I was and your kitchen doesn't make sense or you've got a cupboard where just things go when you don't know where to put them carve out a couple of hours at the weekend or something to get it sorted and you'll come out feeling so revitalized i promise <laughs> I woke up one morning this month with the urge to plant things. I can't explain it. I don't know if I had a dream about the garden or like spring cleaning. It was just an urge to kind of reset the garden and plant something new and grow something. But I had this urge pretty late into spring. So, so I was like, gosh, what can I plant? Is it too late to plant anything? But I just really wanted to do it. Basically, the last house we lived in together before we moved here was our first house together. We've never owned a house or anything, but that was the first place that was ours as a couple living totally together with no other flatmates. So it was really special for us. We really wanted to focus our money on collecting furniture that will stay with us for a long time and just making the inside of the house feel like ours and making it feel like our first home. But in our first house, a lot of the furniture we had was rented. So we were able to do that quite slowly, which was nice. It also meant that because we were so focused on the house though, we weren't focused on the garden chores. We did nothing with our garden in the last place we lived. When we moved into this house, we didn't get it furnished. So we had to spend a little bit more time 
collecting some more furniture as well so that everything felt nicely ours. I think pretty much every room now has got what we want in it which is good. But now that the house here feels, I'm gonna put complete in quotes because it I don't know if a house will ever feel complete. I feel like there's always something you kind of want to improve or work on. But now that we kind of, we love pretty much every room in this house and every space, I just thought maybe we should try our hands at gardening and making something nice with the garden. I don't garden though. I have no knowledge on gardening. I barely have house plants. I have like one plant over there which hasn't been watered in months, I think, but it's still going strong. I should probably water it. <laughs> and I have a plant upstairs as well, but I don't know, I like plants, but I don't like the maintenance of them so much. Or it's not that I don't like it, I'm just not as good as I should be at it. So you may be asking yourself, now that I'm saying that, why have I decided to undertake some gardening? I don't know. But I suppose maybe because I'm planting them from seeds, I'm more focused on taking care of them. And I can say now that it's been a few weeks since I started this endeavor, that that is true. I'm always checking up on my wee seedlings to make sure they're healthy and happy. So anyway, I wanted to garden. So I did some research to see whether it was too late for me to plant anything and it's not. Sunflowers are one of my favorite plants. So I looked that up and you can plant sunflowers inside around this time and then transfer them outside. And I also love lavender and it is the same with lavender. So I was like, I will try both of these things because I love them both. And what have I got to lose? So I went to my local garden center and kind of walked around a bit, not really knowing what I was doing, but I found lavender seeds and I found sunflower seeds. There were different versions of the sunflower seeds as well. I just kind of chose the first one I picked up. I got some little compostable plant pots and some plastic ones as well. I was making this up as I went along. I was just kind of going off what I thought gardening was and picking up what looked right and hoping for the best. When I went to pay for these things, the woman was so, so helpful because I think I must have had a panicked look in my eyes or something because she said something like, oh, that's exciting, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, I've never done this before Um, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing and um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. And then she started telling me exactly what to do. She was like, with the sunflowers, put one in each pot, you bury them a little bit. And she was like, sunflowers are easy. You've chosen a good starter. She did not say that for the lavender. She didn't say anything bad about it, but I did note that she didn't say lavender was easy but she did tell me like scatter the lavender over, don't bury the lavender, just like let them scatter on top. And then she was also very clear that I was not to overwater and I had to be really careful with not overwatering the plants. And I was like, thank you. Thank you, you kind, kind woman. I left the garden center with this information, got home and started planting and it was so relaxing. I loved doing the actual planting of it. I put Taylor Swift's new album on in the background because plants love music. Alex told me that playing music to plants makes them happy and makes them grow better. And I was like, same. So we listened to Tortured Poets Department together while I put them in the pots. And it was only after I planted the lavender that I decided to look up like what I should expect from the lavender. And that was when I saw people were like, don't bother growing lavender from seeds, just buy the shrub and plant it directly into the ground. It's too, it's quite difficult to grow lavender from seeds, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, maybe I should have thought of this 
before I went to the garden center to buy seeds of lavender, but I was like, it's too late now. I also made so <laughs> the big mistake where I was like, got so focused on just planting the sunflowers nice and like, deep enough that they're covered by soil but not so deep that they had to fight to the surface and everything that I just started forgetting which pots I had put a seed into instead so I had to du double back and like check and that will come into play in a bit that mistake after everything was planted I was just so excited I was so excited to go to sleep and wake up the next morning to go and check on my little plants nothing was happening for the first couple days and then suddenly something so I think it's been pretty much a week. I think it's been a week exactly actually since I planted them and look how tall some of them are getting. This one is the best so far I think. This one too is doing really well. They're so cute. This one, I think I made a mistake because I was too excited and the seed was still on top and I I don't know what I'm doing so I was just like oh maybe it'll help if I just nudge the seed off the top but I think that was not a good thing to do because I think the leaves needed more time inside the seeds so you live and you learn. This one is poking through but it's been poking through like that for like days uh, so I don't know what's going on with that one and then this one I have a funny feeling that I didn't put a seed in this one. I think I forgot because I think there should be some sort of sighting of a little sprout by now and there isn't. So I think that's my bad. I did make a mistake when I was planting the seeds of just putting the pots down willy nilly and then I forgot which ones I planted in and I tried to figure it out but I very well made a mistake with this one. Um, but yeah very pleased with how that's going the lavender is not showing anything but with my limited knowledge of gardening from what i could tell online i think it takes longer for lavender to germinate i also read that like clearing it with cling film oh my god wait there's one there oh i didn't even see that's so flipping exciting okay sorry Oh my god, I can't believe it. Um, I guess I won't be uh, covering it with cling film. I don't know if I should have done that at the start, but I don't know. That one's, that's a little one that's coming through. That is so exciting. It was safe to say that I had got the gardening bug at this point. Like who knew gardening could be so enriching? I didn't, but it is and checking up on my wee seed babies every day was making me so happy so I was like well I'm clearly an expert now because I've successfully started growing some sunflowers let's go and attack the garden head on so I went back to the garden center I went to get some tools the tools were quite expensive to get a spade it was like 50 pounds for the spade and I didn't want to do that I didn't want to invest in a fancy spade in case this is a fleeting hobby and now, then I've just got an expensive spade that I'm not using. So I went for this little like pitchfork instead, which I was worried was gonna be actually pointless and really hard to use, but it did actually work quite well for raking up the garden. Basically what I decided to do was just make a little flower bed at the side of the house and start there and see where that takes me. And the fork proved very useful, but I did use my hands a lot as well of just like pulling up weeds. I went to the garden center to get tools and then came away with the pitchfork, <laughs> some thyme and some wildflower seed packets. And I set to work creating the flower bed. And let me tell you, gardening is hard, hard work. I was doing it on a really nice day, so it was hot and I was sweating, my back was sore, my legs were sore. I am 26 now, but I'm also a 26 year old who doesn't really exercise or take care of my body and I could feel that in that moment. But it was such a nice day that I was like powering through and it was going to be so worth it and it did feel so worth it once I created this lovely flower bed and I started planting things. So when the flower bed was ready, I planted the thyme at the edge because I thought it would be nice to be on the edge of the pathway where I, me and Alex stand a lot when we've got Sienna in the garden, be nice to smell the thyme. So I planted that out there, put some compost on top to like enrich the soil a bit more. I did no research into this. If I've done it wrong and you're a really good gardener, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna 
I'm just guessing and I'm gonna see if this works at all. I also decided to spread the wildflower uh, seed packet all along the flower bed just to see how that would work, if that would produce anything exciting. I also decided to plant the extra sunflower seeds that I had left over directly into the ground because I had done some extra research and I had read that people, you can do that once it gets to a certain point in the year too, like warmer weather, which it is now. So I thought I would conduct what I am calling the great sunflower experiment because I've basically planted sunflowers in so many different ways without even trying. So I've planted some into pots and let them germinate in the pots inside. I've now then planted some directly to into the ground outside. And then I've also transferred some into pots, bigger pots now, which I've kept inside and some into bigger pots, which I've kept outside. I'm just going off of nothing. <laughs> Like I've done a little bit of research and I know that I know there's something called hardening off which is if you've got plants that you're growing indoors like kind of introduce them to outside gradually so they get used to like the weather and the wind and stuff and they grow a bit stronger. So I've done that kind of with the ones that I'm growing inside and then I've also just trial by fired some of the sunflowers by just repotting them putting them straight outside seeing if they survive that and then I've also just planted actual seeds in the garden to see if that'll work at all. I think, considering this is the first time I've done anything like this, it is going beautifully. So as of right now, which is like, I'd say it, it must be three weeks about after I first planted the sunflowers, the sunflowers inside in the bigger pots are going the best just now. I definitely transferred them into bigger pots at the right time because when I did the transferring, I forgot to film it, but the roots had started growing through the compost po compostable pot, which I thought was so cool. <laughs> so they're going really, really great. The sunflowers in the bigger pots outside are going well-ish. I ran out of compost, so one of the pots isn't full enough of compost, so I definitely need to get more compost and fill it up. I don't know what's gonna happen in terms of watering because we did have rain the other day and obviously sunflowers do need watered but obviously I can't control the rain. So I don't know if it's gonna be beneficial for the sunflowers getting the rain more but sporadically or not. I'm just, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on them and I'm gonna see what happens. The sunflowers I've planted directly into the flower bed, I have not noticed them yet and also the flower bed I've clearly not weeded well enough because there are weeds coming back through so I need to sort of figure out how I'm gonna do that. I don't want weeds there but I don't want to go in yanking stuff up because I don't know if that'll disturb the sunflowers and the wildflowers and everything. So I'm just gonna leave that just now. I'm not so upset about that because I went in completely on a whim doing that and kind of with the idea that it might not work. The thyme in the flower bed is starting to flower, which is so exciting. So I'm hoping that goes well. And I'm hoping that if my thyme goes well, maybe next summer I can make that whole flower bed a herb garden. Cause I think that would be pretty cool and that would smell gorgeous. And that would hopefully be good for bees. I think maybe. I'm still waiting to see any sign of some uh, uh, wildflowers as well in the flower bed. Um, I don't know how long they'll take to appear, but we'll see. This was very much like a trial by fire experiment. Um, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's all just a learning curve. The lavender as well only has that one little stem still, but that one stem looks great. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm like happy about that stem, but I'm also like, why is that one doing well? And where's the rest of them? The seeds are still on top of the soil. I don't know what's going on with the lavender. I, again, it's just that I'm, take, I'm keeping my eye on it and seeing how it goes. Honestly, all in all, I'm so proud of the sunflowers and the fact that I've managed to grow something so far. I hope I'm not jinxing it with this video and like tomorrow they're not gonna be dead or something. I'm so proud of my sunflowers so far that's making me really happy that the kind of other things that aren't working so well right now, I don't even feel disappointed by it. I kind of just feel excited by the fact that 
I'm trying and I'm learning and I completely get the hype over plants now like completely get it. I'm kind of disappointed that I've like gotten into it a bit late in spring because I could have started earlier and planted so much more I think but also I think it's good that I'm starting slow. I think if I had started earlier I would have maybe planted too much and gotten overwhelmed. So this is going to be good year preparing for what I want to do next year just seeing what I can handle. How much I can handle. <laughs> So this month has been amazing in terms of resetting the house, resetting the garden, trying new things, having guests round. The difficult thing this month has been at the beginning of the month hitting a reading slump and hitting some writer's block at the same time and I think probably for similar reasons. I don't know if it's because I had guests down so we were preparing for that and just being distracted by things. I also recently got back into Animal Crossing and started a new island so that's been sucking up a lot of my time. So I have been like enjoying a hobby but not reading specifically. Writing on the other hand is harder because I can't force ideas out of my head. I was writing at the beginning of the month so well. I woke up one day and I had like a clear vision of how I wanted my story structure to go and that helped so much. It like unlocked something in me. So I spent like probably a week and a half, two weeks straight just like tip, tip, tip tapping and I did so so well and then once I had purged all of the new ideas I had out on the page I then hit the wall of not knowing what to do next. Basically what I'm working on right now is my what I'm calling my second first draft because I finished a first draft before Christmas and then started a second draft after Christmas but the second draft has turned into something that is just a complete rewrite of the story like all the characters and relationships have and setting have stayed the same but the main plot has taken a real swerve so everything's kind of getting rewritten which is why I'm kind of calling it more of a second first draft rather than a second draft if that makes sense. So what I'm doing to combat the reading slump is just making sure that I am reading a little bit every day even if it's just a page. As long as I'm picking up a book and putting in the effort to read I'm happy and I'm just trusting that it'll come back. It's just annoying because it's not even that like I'm not interested in the books I'm reading right now and I'm not enjoying the books that I'm reading right now. I just think I'm wanting to play Animal Crossing too much and I'm hoping that calms down because I do. I'm missing reading. I'm missing the urge to pick up the book. I'm reading The Secret History right now and Storm Child by Michael Robotham which is uh, the latest installment in a series that I love. And I'm loving both of these books, but it's taken me ages to get through them just because I'm not having the urge to pick them up. And it's not anything to do with the books themselves, it's just my mindset. So I'm just, I'm kind of trusting that it's going to be okay. <laughs> and I think this weekend I'm going to make an effort to sit down with a specific time frame of mind of how long I want to read for and hopefully I do that for a couple of days I can get back into the routine of it. I think just there's been quite a lot on this month that's just kind of upset my routine. In terms of writer's block I have taken a more action-based solution towards fixing that. So usually with the writing I work on Scrivener and Scrivener's great because there's it's specifically built as a, a word processor for writers whether you're a screenwriter, uh, writing a novel, whatever it's it's got so much in there in terms of how you organize your work and everything so that all your research, all of your planning and the document itself can all be in one place accessible to you. You can look at double screens so you can see your research on one side and your document on the other so you're not having to go back and forth between websites and stuff like that. It's just a really great tool. One of the tools I use for it is for scene planning. You can kind of come up with like storyboards and so like I'll write out like a scene description and it'll become like a little folder which you can move about on the screen. So I've basically taken this concept but moved it into the physical world. So I took some post-it notes and I started writing down without looking at what I'd already planned because I've kind of planned the whole book on my laptop already. Just over 40,000 words into my second first draft right now as well where I've hit the writer's block so I was like okay I'm not even going to look at that I'm just going to take the post-it notes and physically write down what the most important scenes to me are, 
what scenes I like for the sake of it, what scenes I can think of that I haven't written yet that I think are going to be fun and put them physically on the wall in the spare room and see them written out like that rather than on a screen and honestly obviously it's the same thing but just one's on the screen and one's physical but just that switch did help so much. I think it helped that I wasn't looking at a screen. We all look at screens way too much all the time and I think that if you're looking at one thing so much it can kind of create this block in your head, a creative block. So just stepping away from a screen, away from the screen that has so many distractions on it as well. Because even though I put Do Not Disturb on on my MacBook it's still so easy for me to just move the cursor down and click on Safari and go onto whatever website I want to go onto. It's so easy for that. So the self-discipline you have to have is quite a lot and if you hit a writer's block it's even harder to fight to have that self-discipline. So stepping away from the screen was great. Also being able to use my hand and physically move scenes around so I could imagine different orders in which things happen. It was so helpful. <laughs> Again, it's no different to what I was doing on the laptop. On the laptop I'm just using my cursor to move the scenes but it's just the action of being able to hold the scene in my hand and look at it and think what would happen if I could just put it up there or what could happen if I just moved it to the end. It was kind of like getting more of your body involved with the creative process in your brain that kind of helped there and it made me be able to see that actually I have a th really good strong plot already. There's no problem with the plot I've realised. What I've realised missing is scenes that specifically develop characters and character relationships. That's where I'm struggling right now and that's where I'm hitting the block because I was looking at this wall and I was thinking and thinking, I was like, what is it missing? What is it missing? And I figured out like some things for the plot need to be added in. Like I had to add an extra character in which made the plot stronger and I was like, that'll fix that, that's fine. But it made me realise that that is like the strength of it. What I'm struggling with is coming in with filler scenes in terms of plot so scenes that aren't necessarily there for the plot, although they can be, but the main tool that these scenes have is to develop a relationship further or to give an insight into a character further. And I'm saying scenes, they don't have to be like really long scenes or anything, but I just need more elements like that that are still fun and interesting to read. Because it's a romance, you can kind of have more freedom to be silly with what you're writing because romance readers like silly things. Me as a romance reader, I love things in books, in romance books that don't need to be there in terms of the plot but are there because they're developing a really important dynamic between characters and that add a really fun element to the story and often these scenes are the ones that stick with the reader the most and also they're the most fun to write. Like so far the scenes I've written that are like that have been so fun but they're also ideas that have popped up so spontaneously like in the middle of writing a different scene. I can't fully say whether this has worked completely yet because I've not actually sat down to write since I've done this mood board. I actually literally did this yesterday but it has really reassured me that I know that the plot there is strong in my opinion. I think I've got a really strong plot and I really do like my characters and the relationships and the setting like but I just need the those elements to have more time to develop and that's what I need to figure out. So I think next step for me, the scenes that I've added onto this board that haven't been written yet, I'm going to write them and hopefully by the time those are written I'll have had more ideas and more kind of, more things have emerged from the characters for me to beef them up. That's what I'm hoping. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is a very different sort of video for this challenge, uh, challenge? For this channel, but I've really enjoyed making it. It's kind of been a longer video in terms of I've been filming little bits throughout the month, which I think is quite nice. It's nice for me to look back on and see what I've done this month and what I've enjoyed. It's like a nice moment to reflect. I like these types of videos because they really help me to relax. So I'm hoping that if you've made it this far, it's kind of had that effect on you as well. It's just been a bit of a like time where you can switch your head off and not worry about anything and just watch me try and 
grow some sunflowers and stuff. But like I said, the channel's not changing. Like most of the videos I do will still be book related, more like the other videos I do. But I might occasionally do things like this. I really liked filming it. Let me know in the comments what you got up to in May. And also if you have any advice for me on gardening, please give it. Because <laughs> I need all of the help I can get. But thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!